This November, New York City will choose its next mayor, who will take office with a host of challenges that the pandemic has made even greater than they are normally. The Republican nominee for mayor is Curtis Sliwa, perhaps best known as the founder of the citizen public safety group Guardian Angels, and we welcome him now to Bloomberg. So, Mr. Sliwa, thank you so much for being with us. Let me start with the most obvious question. What is your path to victory? It's, it's an uphill battle, but what is your path? How do you see winning this election? Well, uh, remember, there were three terms served by Michael Bloomberg as the Republican mayor, but he had an independence party line. And in fact, he spent millions of dollars to procure it. I was able to get an independent party line for the general election in which I got volunteers out into the streets and we were able to acquire the signatures necessary to qualify so that people will have a choice. He can vote for Curtis Sliwa on November 2nd as a Republican, but there are some, even my parents who are no longer here, who would never have crossed that national line, <laughs> would never have voted and didn't for Reagan. They weren't Reagan Democrats or Giuliani Democrats and probably wouldn't have voted for their own son had I only been running as a Republican. So it's a vast opportunity for moderate Democrats and independents to actually seek me out, find out what I stand for, and then, all of a sudden, maybe vote for me on the independent party line, which gives me two lines to run on, which other candidates don't have. So that's one path to victory. The other path to victory is that, as the Republican candidate, I'm able to go into neighborhoods where the only Republican they've ever seen is Abraham Lincoln on a $5 bill, because I've developed that credibility over 42 years of leading the Guardian Angels here in New York City, providing safe streets, safe subways, safe parks, safe schools, as I've done in now 13 countries and 130 cities. So I'm universally accepted by all communities. I just now have to go in there and convince them, don't just tell me I've done a great job. Just don't pat me on the back so hard. I've got to go for a chiropractic adjustment tomorrow. Get out there yeah. and vote out. So, so, Mr. Sliwa, you said the magic word, Michael R. Bloomberg, and I need to remind everybody that he is the founder and majority owner of our parent company, Bloomberg LP. But but let me come back. Uh, last time I heard, uh, normally, in a normal time, uh, the Democrats outnumber Republicans five to one in this city. I'm told that since President Trump, it's actually gone to seven to one. So that means there are an awful lot of uh, Democrats out there you have to persuade to cross, cross that, as you called it, Maginot Line. What do you say to the Republican, to, to, I'm sorry, the Democrat who says, I've always voted Democrat, to say, I want you to cross that line? You know, I'm an unusual Republican in the fact that I had an opponent in the primary who I beat convincingly by 70 percent of the vote that I garnered, who spent a million dollars in the last week telling everybody Curtis Lee is not a Republican, Curtis Lee was a never Trumper, and yet I won by 70 percent of the vote. And that is true. Uh, I've always been an independent. I was the New York State uh, chairman of the Reform Party before Andrew Cuomo, the governor, wiped out all the third parties. And I didn't vote for Donald Trump the first time or the second time. I voted for independent party candidates. So you can't all of a sudden say, well, he's a Trumper, and immediately just disassociate me from the campaign process. And that enables me to go out there and speak on the populist messages that I've always represented to a wide variety of people, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, male, female, poor, yeah. middle class, wealthy, yeah. and trying to convince them to improve, not move, because there's a mass exodus out of New York City now, mostly involving wealthy people right. and People. Well, one of the issues certainly in the race thus far has been public safety, something you're identified with going back to the Guardian Angels days. At the same time, you have an opponent in Eric Adams who is a retired New York City captain. Does that make it more difficult for you to persuade people that you do a substantially better job than this retired policeman at keeping us safe? Well, I've been consistent over 42 years. Eric Adams, if we just look at last summer this time, was out there painting Black Lives Matter on the streets of New York City with the Democrat he's most associated with. He is, in fact, a de Blasio Democrat. Uh, uh, de Blasio was actually working behind the scenes to get Eric Adam the nomination of the Democratic Party. Instead of condemning the rioters and looters, many of them Black Lives Matter, Antifa, who would turn a peaceful demonstration into total anarchy. Cops were attacked physically. Their equipment was vandalized. Remember, there was graffiti all over the city, F the police. All cops are bastards, ACAB, and words worse, just black, black, plastered everywhere. And I didn't see Eric Adams, the former police officer, address that. In fact, 
He was with the demonstrators. I, on the other hand, was, was with the police talking about how they needed to be refunded, how we needed to hire more police. And I already had a plan to do that by actually having a dedicated property tax against Madison Square Garden and the endowments of Columbia and NYU cities that sit on billions of dollars for paying no property tax. And it would enable us to train 3,000 new police officers that we desperately need. But the other big issue, and I think everyone in the business community can relate to this, is right. police have been stripped of qualified immunity in the city of New York. And right. the person who led the charge was former NYPD police officer Eric Adams. Yeah. He helped remove right. the protections that police had from being sued personally. Right. Now they have to go out and find a personal police malpractice right. insurance policy like a doctor or a lawyer would in private practice. <laughs> That's so unfair. So, so, so Mr. Sliwa, it won't come as a surprise to anybody in our audience that you support the police. I think people would expect that of you. And I, I do have to note, when it comes to Black Lives Matter, there were certainly a lot of protesters in Black Lives Matter who were peaceful, who were not doing violence. But are, do you also support the police discipline? Uh, because some people say we need really strong police, we need strong policing. We also might need to make sure that we're weeding out people who are not doing things they shouldn't be doing. Let me give you an example. How would you have handled Eric Garner if you were mayor? The chokehold case. Uh, uh, Officer Pantaleo did choke him out. It, it was a hold that should not be legal. There was no nece necessity to use it, especially he had other police officers to assist him in taking Eric Garner down. I've always been specific on that. But also, if you look at my history, in the first 13 years, I was not a beloved figure by the police in right. the U.S. They actually had me arrested 76 times. Yeah, Ed Koch was not your fan, as I recall. <laughs> right. And so I know what it, it, it's right. like to get a wooden shampoo, a yeah. concrete facial, and to be lost in the system yeah. behind bars. Yeah. And yet, yeah. when cops go beyond the right. definition of the, the oath right. that they took in office, right. not to abuse people's civil rights, right. there needs to be a whole standard yeah. of... We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. That's Curtis Sliwa.